Benazzotti. I mistakenly in my talk called him Dr. Benazzotti because this man, I've trained doctors for 20 years. Benazzotti was one of the first non-doctors to come into my program. And he is responsible for me saying, I have to empower the average person that, that life changed because of these things. And I started certifying coaches and Ben was a big part of that because of his passion. I've never met a man more passionate and driven for this mission than Ben Azadi. He has put on the map keto. It's not a diet, as he says, and he's right. It's a absolutely, it's a metabolic pathway that saves our life. But the point is, is he's beyond keto. Understand that. He's going to talk to you and teach you principles that how to use keto properly. His book, Keto Flex, is absolutely all about that. This man has built a massive following because of his passion. Obviously, you're going to hear part of his story about his father, his weight loss. If you saw him up on stage yesterday, it's the fact that he lost a ton of weight. He did not look like this man. So I don't know the exact number, but it was a lot. <laughs> but the fact is, is this man is changing lives on a big, in a big, big way. He has a huge following. You're blessed to be here. And I'm going to tell you one other blessing. He normally has 140 PowerPoints and he could have got it done in 20 minutes. But thank God Dr. K wouldn't allow that. So you're going to get the raw Ben Azadi. Come to the stage. Give him a huge round of applause. Yeah, exactly. What are those PowerPoints? He might even have them in his pocket. I don't know. Are you have full PowerPoints? No, it's, it's rare. rare. No, yeah, PowerPoints PowerPoints no PowerPoints. No PowerPoints. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I lost a Bitcoin because I said there's no way in the amount of time we were uh, uh, audited that I'll get through it without rushing. 140 in 40 minutes. 140 without rushing. Minutes. I haven't I gotten no the bit, I haven't gotten the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's not going to. He's cheated. I'm telling you, cheated. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's impossible. It's physically impossible. So we'll see if he can do it without the the PowerPoints. I don't know. The goat. The goat. Give him a big big round of applause, Dr. Papa. So no slides, 20 minutes, Dr. Kate, thanks for the challenge and congrats on your event, by the way. Honor to be here, yeah, amazing. Do you guys know the percentage of how many American adults are metabolically unhealthy? What do you think it is? 63%, 100%, not 100%, Raphael. Close. Close, 93%. 93% of American adults are metabolically unhealthy. So we have a big problem. Obesity is about to hit 50% by 2030. Diabetics, pre-diabetes, 60% of American adults are diabetic or pre-diabetic. Raphael was talking about cancer. The CDC, if you want to believe the CDC, one in three women are diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, men one in two. By the year 2032, 50% of children will be born on the autism spectrum, according to the projections. So what are the culprits here? What are the main causes of why the body is dysfunctioning and we have symptoms? Are symptoms the actual problem? Do you think the symptoms are the problem? Symptoms could be so far removed from the actual problem, but we have been brainwashed to believe that symptoms and diseases and diagnoses are the problem. So what do we do? We take medications to mask them. But the truth is, symptoms are a gift from your innate intelligence. It's a gift from God. It's your body's check engine light. You ate something that was unhealthy. You thought a bad thought. Your environment's making you sick. If your check engine light turned on, you don't mask it. You pull the car over and figure out what's going on. So in this short, whatever, 18 minutes left or so in the conversation, I'm gonna share a little bit about what I believe are the main culprits. Of course, toxicity, when Dr. Pompa spoke about, what Raphael speaking, spoke about, all the amazing speakers. I'm gonna share more about glucose, insulin spikes, sugar, I'm gonna transition into keto a little bit. I have a gift for you. These are not business cards, but I have a gift for those who are actually towards the front. And then we'll get into what I believe the number one cause of rapid aging towards the end of the presentation here with no slides. So the first thing is sugar and insulin spikes. It's one of the fastest ways to age your body. Raphael talked about collagen. We know about the importance of collagen for skin health. It is all over our body. 
but when we eat a lot of processed sugar, it strips collagen away from our body. It ages us rapidly. And what would you guess, if I asked you the question, how many times does the average person eat throughout the day? What do you think? Give, give some numbers out there. Three, four, three, 10 times, says Deborah. Three to four, seven times. Anybody else? Higher, you're saying? The average person eats 17 to 23 times per day. Sounds like a made up stat, right? And my definition of eating is every time you raise glucose and insulin and start that digestive process. So it's the kombucha, it's the almonds, it's the protein shake, and of course it's the full meal. The average person is eating throughout the entire day and what is happening? Glucose and insulin, glucose and insulin. And when you have high levels of glucose in your bloodstream, that is a toxin to the body. In order for that human body to function in an optimal state, it wants one teaspoon of sugar in the entire bloodstream. So when you test your fasting glucose, that's 80 milligrams per deciliter. That's a really healthy fasting glucose. And of course, we're well equipped to eat some carbs and process it, but not 17 to 23 times a day, and not 300 to 400 grams of carbs per day. That's gonna rapidly age us. I know that we've been taught by personal trainers and fitness coaches, I was one of them, to speed up your metabolism and lose some fat, we gotta eat every two to three hours. But the truth is, if you eat every two to three hours, you're gonna age yourself faster. 93% of Americans are unhealthy, they're eating every two to three hours. They're raising glucose and insulin. So enter keto. And look, I am not dogmatic about keto. I think it's a metabolic process. It's a tool, it's not the only tool. But those 93% of people that are unhealthy, they're in a keto deficiency. They're stuck burning sugar. And this human body could only burn sugar or glucose. Sugar or glucose, we'll interchange that. So sugar and glucose, I should say, or fat and ketones. So either we're burning sugar or we're burning fat. When we're stuck burning sugar, like those 93% of people, we're rapidly aging. So when we get them into ketosis and we start to burn body fat, that is such a powerful way to lower inflammation, lower glucose and insulin, prevent that domino effect because pre-diabetes obviously leads to diabetes. But here's the thing. Do people actually die from diabetes? No. It's really rare to die from diabetes. So what are they dying from? Cancer, heart disease, amputations, strokes. It's the, dom the first domino to fall is prediabetes and diabetes. It leads to all these diseases. So by simply just eating more fat and protein, amazing fats, doing keto, getting into this process, and going in and out of ketosis helps you become proactive and not reactive. Einstein said it best. He said, intellectuals solve problems. Geniuses prevent them. I mean, how much better is it to be proactive than reactive? And I don't have enough time here or my slides to talk about keto, but I will say if you just go on YouTube and type in keto camp, camp with a K, I'll give you a masterclass on keto. Men do it differently than women, and women who have a menstrual cycle do it differently than women who are postmenopausal. So there's different ways to do it. There's different fats, and that's gonna lead me to the next topic here. The right fats are very important. If I gave you the scenario about what's gonna lead to disease faster in a shorter lifespan, Eating processed sugar, I just made the case how bad it is. Smoking cigarettes every day, or eating processed vegetable oils every day, which one would you say is worse? The oils. The oils. You're smart. So I asked this same question to Dr. Kate Shanahan. She was the nutritionist for actually the Los Angeles Lakers when Kobe Bryant used to play. She's a friend of mine. And I said, which one's worse, Dr. Kate? She laughed and said, easy, Ben. Hands down the oils. Yeah, smoking is not good for you, but you finish the last puff, damage is done. Eating processed sugar, obviously not good for you, but you could exercise, burn it off, build muscle, you're good to go. These industrialized seed oils, and I'll give you a list of them, and I have a gift, like I said, they're called linoleic acid. And the half-life of these rancid fats are 680 days. Allow me to explain that a little bit more, meaning if you stop eating them today, 680 days, these fats will be around the mitochondrial membrane, the cell membrane, creating inflammation. Half of them will still be in your body. They stick around for a very, very long time. And they're everywhere. They're at your favorite restaurant. I don't care if it's a five-star restaurant. They're, they're absolutely everywhere. So I'm gonna give you a list of them. If you're taking notes, there's eight of them you wanna write down. I'll give you a second to grab your phone and get the notes tab. 
So three C's, three S's, and then two others. So the three C's are, hey, everybody's recording instead of taking notes, I love it. <laughs> the three C's are canola oil, corn oil, and cottonseed oil. Corn oil is called rapeseed oil in the UK, just a heads up. So corn, cotton, canola. The three S's are sunflower, safflower, and soybean oil. And the two others are grapeseed oil and rice bran oil. These are polyunsaturated fatty acids. So that word poly means many. So when we look at the chemical structure of these fats, it contains many double bonds. The more double bonds a fat has, the more aggressively it attracts oxygen. And when that happens, it oxidizes. So what would happen if I bit into an apple, it's not keto, but bit into an apple, <laughs> left it here, and then came back a few hours later and looked at that apple, it would start to turn brown. Oxidation, this is what this, these fats are doing to ourselves. It's oxidizing ourselves. It's leading to cancer and disease and a short lifespan. So what we wanna do is swap them for saturated fats and monounsaturated fats. Saturated fats have no double bonds, very stable. Mono Unsaturated fats have one, still stable. So these are going to include, if you could get the phones back out for the healthy fats, uh, avocado oil, olive oil, butter, ghee, beef tallow, and lard from, uh, healthy lard from pigs. But the challenge is this, when we go to the restaurants, they're going to cook with these bad oils. So for years, I've been telling the server, I'm allergic, P Dr. Pampa and Marilee do it all the time, we're allergic. When I go to dinner with them, we're allergic. If you've ever gone to dinner with me, we're all allergic. <laughs> and, and they're going to actually acknowledge that because they don't want to get sued versus a preference. But for years, I've been telling my students that when you make that request, they'll listen to you, but they feel uncomfortable. So I developed the seed oil allergy cards. And on this card, it says allergy card. Dear chef, I have food allergies to the following oils, the ones I listed for you. Please follow these oils that are safe. Please swap them for these oils that are safe. Thank you for keeping me safe. They bring it back to the chef and they accommodate. How many of you would like the seed oil cards? <laughs> I don't know if I have enough for everybody. So like I said, those who are sitting in the front will get rewarded. But what I will do, I have some that are in metal frame, but I'm gonna keep those. When I talk to some of you later, I'll hand out the metal ones, but if you wanna, one of you wanna grab these and just take one, and then just take one, and then hand the box down. We might have enough for most of you, but go ahead, that's my gift to you. Enjoy it and use it wisely, please. All right, the next thing, this is the most important thing, is, I believe this, yeah, sugar is bad for you, seed oils are bad for you, toxins are, are really bad for you, but I think there's something else even more evil than what we have spoken about already. And that is lack of purpose. When you lack purpose and you don't love what you're doing, why would God want you to continue living your life? Why would you want to continue living your life? Allow me to unpack that. There's a book called Recovering the Soul, 1989, medical doctor Larry Dossey. In the book, they determine when people have their first heart attack here in the United States, 85% of the time, when was it? Monday morning between 8 and 9 a.m. in the morning. What's the significance of that time? People going to jobs that they hate. They would get a heart attack. Being stressed out by hating your life, hating your job, hating the people around you is the fastest way to accelerate aging. In your environment, here's the most important thing I could share with you. Your environment is going to determine the thoughts that you think and your beliefs and your values. The thoughts that you think will determine the habits that you develop. The habits you develop will determine the results you get and ultimately your destiny, right? So I talked about yesterday, 60,000 thoughts a day, those lead to habits and behaviors. But before that is the environment part the people around you. And I have dinner with my mom every Thursday, I'm making a point here. Every Thursday I go to my mom and me and my fiance, we have dinner with my mom. 
And I enjoy that time. I love my mom. She's a superhero. But there is a problem with the dinner. She has the television on. And what do I see? She watches the Hallmark Channel, Alina's favorite. Uh, and there's commercials for Big Pharma and Big Food. Commercial after commercial. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because our environment is so important, right? I wanted to find out how many of these commercials are funded by Big Pharma. And I did the research. What do you think? How, what is the percentage of all TV commercials in the United States that are directly funded by Big Pharma? What do you think it is? Oh, this is a smart group here. 75%. Then I asked the question, how many countries in the entire world allow for Big Pharma to directly market to the consumer? How many countries out of 195 countries? Two countries. The United States and? New Zealand. Good job, Brian. The United States and New Zealand. All right. Then I ask the question, because it's not just big pharma, it's big food. It's, it's McDonald's, it's Burger King, et cetera. I see those too. We have, so 75% is big pharma. That means we have 25% left. Out of that 25% of commercials, how much is funded by big food? 20, that's close, yeah. About 15%. So essentially, essentially, when the television is on, whether you're watching it or not, what's going into your subconscious mind is take this, cholesterol lowering medication, this statin if you have high cholesterol, take this Viagra, but if you have an erection for more than four hours, go see your doctor. <laughs> if you're having trouble sleeping, take this, but it might lead to prostate cancer, but if it does, you could take this medication and then eat some McDonald's or Burger King, but then get the medication again. You see, our environment determines the thoughts that we think, the habits we create, and our destiny. So we want to control our environment, number one, and then we want to love what we do. I mean, how important is it? If you think about this, like, I don't have the energy, people say. I don't have the energy. Somebody might not have the energy when they're, not, when they're doing something they don't enjoy doing. But then their friend calls them up. Hey, look, there's a new nightclub that just opened up in LA. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's go. I have, you could manifest the energy when you're doing something you love to do. Or you get a phone call and you talk to that person for three hours, even though you felt exhausted, right? When you are doing something you love, when you live on purpose with your purpose, you will become unstoppable. Have any of you ever been told that you have an addictive personality? Anybody else? I'm one of them. Just to be honest here. I used to be addicted to drugs, video games, alcohol, and a toxic environment. And food, of course. I was obese. But you know what? Addiction is a superpower. Addiction is a gift, as long as you find out what you love to do and you transform, transfer that energy to that passion. I mean, how much energy do we put into our addictions? We become a master at whatever. I was one of the best video game players in the entire world in 2008. Call of Duty and Madden, I was making all this money, doing all this drugs, etc. I was putting the energy into bad behaviors. But when I transformed my health and I started to see what's going on in the world and lack of their health going on, now this is a superpower for me. Pampa talked about how I'm such a hard worker and I do all these things. It's because I'm clear on my purpose. And one of my favorite quotes, I hope you um, either record this or, or look it up. The quote is from a gentleman named Robert Heinlein. And he said, in the absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. Daily trivia is those bad behaviors, the addictions, the, the toxic people in our life. Because in the absence of clearly defined goals, we want to fill that void with these bad behaviors. But when you are loving what you do, the people around you, you're lit up every day. There's no time for that. There's no time for the bad behaviors. And the last thing I'll share with you, Raphael mentioned it. I'm glad you didn't give it away, though, because I was going to talk about it. There is a very powerful supplement. It's anti-aging, anti-cancer, helps with fat loss. How many of you know Dr. Joe Dispenza? He did, uh, they're called, it's called vitamin G. I'll give that away. Vitamin G, they did these workshops with Dr. Joe Dispenza, and they saw 
after taking vitamin G, about 1,200 chemical responses processes take place in the body instantaneously when they took vitamin G. They saw the body raise oxytocin and GABA and dopamine. They saw all these amazing neurochemical processes happen. He saw what it did to in, uh, increase the immune system's ability to fight with viruses and bacteria, lower cortisol. Vitamin G lowers blood pressure. Vitamin G lowers blood sugar levels. Vitamin G is uh, an anti-aging supplement. But let me ask you this. Are there vendors out there with vitamin G? There's some amazing vendors, don't get me wrong. What is vitamin G? It's gratitude. It's gratitude, yeah. Clap it up for gratitude, Kate. I love how you're happy about that. It's a universal law. What you feed energy to expands. In other words, what you appreciate, appreciates. There is a part of your brain called the reticular activating system. It's the size of your pinky. It's in your brain stem. And God put it there to filter out all the stimulation we have every day. If you think about it, there are millions of things the brain needs to filter out every single day. So the RAS filters it out. And how this works is this. You know, we're in LA and I, there's a lot of ladies here, so I'll use an analogy that makes more sense. Let's say you buy uh, this beautiful dress that you were looking at. It's a red dress that you've been researching it online. What's some good clothing brands I'm not familiar with? Give me a good clothing brand. What's your favorite brand? Donna Karen, is that what I heard? All right, Donna Karen. This beautiful red Donna Karen dress, and you buy it. And then all of a sudden, you're wearing it, and you notice, oh, that lady also has the same Donna Karen dress. And then that person does it too. Did she buy it because I just bought this dress? Or was it always there, but now I've activated the RAS to see it? It's the latter. Meaning, when you're focusing on what you hate about yourself, what you hate about your job, how crazy the world is, how angry you are, then all you're gonna see is that. The RAS is just gonna give you more of that. But when you focus on what you appreciate and what you're grateful for and what's abundant in your life, then you'll get more things to be grateful for. That is the way it works. How many of you have a gratitude journal process? Wow, vitamin G process, I love it. All right, I have two minutes left and I think this is gonna be impromptu here. Let's, let's get a daily dose of vitamin G. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. Keep close. I want you to think of somebody, either a current relationship you have or a relationship you had in the past that you're very grateful for. Think of that person. Picture, get really specific. Picture their eyes, the way they smell, the sound of their laugh. Get that person in your mind. And go to a memory with that person. A time where you had so much fun with this person. You laughed with them. Maybe you made love with that person. You enjoyed time with them. I want you to hear their laugh. I want you to see the color of their eyes. I want you to appreciate how much this person means to you. And I want you to open your eyes now. You see, that's vitamin G right there. How many of you felt good after that? I hope everybody did. <laughs> but the secret is not just a gratitude checklist. It's what we just did. The secret is feeling the gratitude. So the mistake I made is I used to say, done with my gratitude this morning. My vitamin G is done. Checklist. But when I stop and just maybe choose one or three things instead of trying to do 20 different things I'm grateful for and I just stayed there, that's where you're going to actually rewire that brain and experience all those benefits. So I encourage you to choose maybe one or three things and stay there for a few minutes versus 20 or 30 things. There's always something to be grateful for. I'm grateful for Dr. Kate. I'm grateful for all your beautiful faces. I'm grateful for Los Angeles, even with all the craziness in Los Angeles. I'm from Miami. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much. I love and appreciate you all. I have vitamin G for you all. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you. If you enjoyed that conversation, you're gonna love this recent interview with world-renowned thyroid expert on why you might not feel well and it has to do with that thyroid. They have a full-blown glandular issue, but I'd say the vast majority of people who have any of those conditions have a level of tissue hypothyroidism. That does not mean that we should rush in with medications and treat these people. That's